Hello everyone, this is Hoda Kanji and today I'm going to show you how we can use Dynamo to create some floors. I'm going to open a new project, either architectural or metric template would work. Uh, when you work with Dynamo, uh, you can work with any units, but uh, I'm going to prefer to go with meters, three decimal places, then because sometimes Dynamo works with numbers between 0 and 1, and those set of numbers make more sense in meters rather than in millimeters. Uh, if you go with like millimeters, when you create different objects in Dynamo, you need to make sure that they are not too small or something. So I'm going to leave this on meters, three decimal places, OK, OK. I'm going to go to Manage, Dynamo is here. I'm going to open a new project. OK, so let's say uh, in Dynamo, first I want to have like a rectangle or something. You can use these two uh, toggles to switch between editing what you see on the screen or uh, editing what's uh, actually in the foreground so you can switch between graph and 3D preview mode. Basically the logic of Dynamo is so different than Revit. There is no wall or roof or floor or anything but there are geometries. Okay so first I want to create like a circle uh, if you type circle, you can go to by center point radius. As soon as you put one of these items, which we call them nodes in Dynamo, it's going to create an object on the screen. If you want to zoom on the object, you need to switch to this mode. Okay, and we can come back here. So Dynamo works based on a set of inputs and outputs. Uh, any input that you connect is going to affect the output. For instance, if I change the radius from 1, which in this case means 1 meter, because if you remember, I put the Revit file on meters. If I change this to like 10, it's going to create a bigger circle. So for instance, if I double click on the surface, it's going to show you a code block, which is the most straightforward way to put a number there. So I can put 10, assign it to the radius, and now we have a very huge circle here with a radius of 10 meters. Why 10 meters? Because Revit is set to meters. Uh, if you are not sure what exactly you want to have as radius, and you want to give yourself some options for future, you can go with something called as number slider. Okay, in the number slider, let's say I want to go from a minimum of 10 meters, this is going to be my floor or something, to like 40 meters. With a step of 1, that means every one meter we can change this number. Now if I assign this to the radius instead of the code block and move this right and left, it's going to automatically uh, change the size of the circle. Okay, if you want to go with a different shape, let's say you want to go with a polygon, you can type polygon. I want to go with uh, this one polygon inscribed within a circle. Because I have a circle, this is the most straightforward way to create polygons. If I connect circle to circle, by default, the number of points is set to 5. So that's why you see a 5-sided polygon over there. If I double click on the screen, assign like 4, and assign this to the number of sides, it's going to create a rectangle. Okay, uh, you can turn the preview on and off for each of the nodes. For instance, now that we don't need the circle anymore, I can right click to remove the check mark for preview. I just want to see the final square. So let's say this is going to be my floor level one. I want to move this up to have more set of floors uh, as we go higher. Right. So how about I group these items to keep everything organized? It's a good idea to group the items. 
I want to group these as floor level 1. This is going to be the basis for my floors. So if I want to move this up, I can type move. Basically, there is nothing named as copy or move in Dynamo. You have something named as translate, right? So for instance, if I go with this one, it's going to translate the given geometry, which in this case is a polygon, within the x, y, or z direction. I want to use this option, assign polygon to polygon. For instance, if I assign 4 meters to my Z translation, that means the second one, the second floor is going to be 4 meters above that. Uh, now, let me show you a trick here. Sometimes you don't want to have only one item. You want this item to be translated several times. That means you need to assign several numbers. First one is going to be 4, next one is going to be translated by 8, 12, 16, and so far. That means you're going to need a list of numbers, not one single number. In that case, you can type sequence. Sequence is a type of list, actually. right? I want to remove the code block, and I want to use the sequence. If I assign sequence to my Z translation, it's going to create 10 items. Each of them is one meter away from each other. Why? Because by default, the amount is set to 10. That means 10 numbers. The step size is set to 1. So if I hover the mouse around one of these nodes and click on the pin item here, you see nine polygons, or actually ten polygons, because in Dynamo, numbers start from zero. So going from zero to nine, we have ten polygons here. Now, again, uh, if you want to assign a different value to the step, uh, you can assign it. For instance, if I double click on the surface, bring a code block, put four, it's going to move each of them 4 meters above. Or if I go with like 3.8, it's going to move them away from each other by 3.8 meters. Now this kind of design is also called parametric or computational. Uh, when we say something is parametric, it means that the final outcome, which in this case for now, it's this node, which is a set of polygons, depends on the parameters that we assign. Any parameters that we change is going to automatically update the outcome. For instance, if I make these larger, at the same time you see the polygons become larger. If I assign like 6 to the number of sides, you see now we have 6-sided polygons, right? And you can keep going, you can make different changes. I'm going to keep this on 4 for now. 3.8 is good. Uh, how about I change this to like 15? Okay, now this is, this is almost good. I'm going to create floors based on these rectangles. Later, uh, I'm going to show you how you can actually uh, rotate them and then create floors. So, how about I organize here a little bit. I want to make a group out of these items. Create group. I'm going to assign floors. This is not about floor level 1 anymore. It's about all the floors. Uh, and just like the step size and everything, if you bring one more code block, like put uh, 8 or something and assign this to the amount, is going to affect the number of the floors, right? So if you change your mind, you can go back to 9, 10, or any other number. I'm going to leave it on 8. This seems good. Now let me show you a trick here. If I go to Revit, Elements, under Revit, under Elements, there is a whole tab for Floor. If I go to floor, we have five options here. Now, what's the difference here? The options 
which have like a plus sign next to them, it means it's going to create that geometry. The options with that red lightening sign, it means that it's going to modify that geometry. And the options with a blue question mark, it means that it's going to give us some information about the specific geometry. So if we want to create floors, we need to go with either the first one or the second one, which have a plus sign here. How do I know which one to go with? We'll hover the mouse around them, read the inputs. For instance, this one says outline curves, floor type level. This one says outline floor type level. In this case, they are not very different. I'll go with the first one. We do have all these items already. So the geometry goes to outline curves. I also need to assign a floor type and a level. For the floor type, if you hover the mouse around here, you see that the input is floor type. Uh, again, if you go back to Revit elements, under floor, there is a floor type. I'm going to bring that floor type by name. I can assign floor type to floor type, and I need to actually assign a name or a string. In Dynamo, string means a bunch of letters or text. Double means number. Okay, so in this case, floor type needs to receive a floor type and the name needs to receive a string. So if I type string here, I want to grab this, put this here. Now I just need to tell Dynamo which of the floor types I want to use and it's going to just uh, create that type of floor for me. For instance, if I go here, just draw one single floor, so architecture, floor, architecture, floor, edit type, rename. I want to copy the exact name of this floor. This is my floor type. So control C, OK, cancel. I just wanted the name. I'm going to go back to Dynamo click on the string and control V to paste the exact name of the floor. This can go to name that goes there. So now the floor type has information. The last thing I need to assign to be able to create floors are the levels. And you see, if you hover the mouse around here, it's going to accept level input. Where is the level input? Again, you need to go to Revit. Anything which we have the equivalent in Revit is going to be under Revit elements. For instance, walls, roofs, curtain panels, all of them are going to be Revit menu elements. I'm going to go to level. And if you want to create levels, we have four options. By elevation, by elevation and name, by level and offset, by level, offset, and name. Uh, how about I go with the second one by elevation and name. So this node is responsible to create levels, right? So I can group those, create group. I'm going to name this as create floors. That's going to create floors. And this item here is going to create level, and then we can assign level to level. So what's the elevation? We already know that the height of each level is 3.8 and we create a sequence. I can pin this here so you can see the information. The elevations are 0, 3.8, 7.6 and so on. Let's say I want to create levels on each of these elevations from the ground. I can assign the same sequence to my elevation. Now the only thing that I need to assign are the names. I want to go with level 1, level 2, all the way to level 8 because in this case I have 8 items. So each of the levels need a different name. That means again I'm going to need some kind of list. This time I'm going to use list create. I'm going to click here so I have 8 elements total. Starting from 0, it's going to go from 0 to 7. Uh, I'm going to need a string here, so I'm going to type a string. 
whenever I need a text, a letter or something, I should bring a string. This is going to be my level 1. Level 1 goes to item 0. Uh, I need to do this for all of the items. Level 2 goes to item 1. Notice that the numbers in Dynamo start from 0, but my levels start from 1. So I'm going to go from 1 to 8 and it's going to go from 0 to 7. So now you see I have 8 levels over there. If I pin this here, you see it goes from level 1 to level 8 and I have 8 elements. It's very important that the number of the items that you assign to the name, which in this case is 8, be the same as the number that you assign to the elevation, which is also the 8. Now if I pin this and pin this, you're going to see that we have a level 1. The name is level 1 and uh, the elevation is 0. Uh, level 2 uh, level 2 has an elevation of 3.8. The reason you see these numbers in brackets is that we already have two levels in Revit. So before going any further, I would like to first put this on manual. Uh, whenever you want to postpone running the Dynamo code, you can go with manual. I'm going to go here. I'm going to delete all the levels because they are going to be created through Dynamo directly. Uh, now I'm going to assign level to level. I can also group these items here as levels. Okay, so uh, the last thing I need to do is just run this. So I created first the floor of level 1, then all the floors, then I assigned levels to them. As soon as I hit run, so we have an error here, we need to read it. It says that the floor by outline type, which means this node, failed because it should uh, have a poly curve as an input. I assigned one geometry as an input. So I want to do this. I want to go to polycare. I want to type polycare because the note over there is telling me that I'm going to need a polycare. And I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to assign geometry to polycare and curve to the outline curves. Now it should work better. I'm going to run it again. This time it seems that we have no errors. Let's go back to Revit. You see that we have all the floors, all the levels are also created. And uh, they are 3.8 meters away from each other. Uh, if you go back here, change some things. For instance, if you change this to like eight-sided polygons and uh, change this to like four meters, and uh, change that number for the radius of our original circle and run again and go back here. You see that everything is updated here, right? The shape is different and the floors um, are created again.